Not very long ago, there was a civilization of 30,000 people. For thousands of years, they built villages, conquered lands, and enslaved tribes across the ocean. There were myths and legends went on and on. For generations and generations, they lived in great harmony with their land and the nature around it. However, most of their story disappeared along with their people. Today, there are around 2,000 Haida lives in the mysterious archipelago of Haida Gwaii. I left Vancouver International Airport in a clear sunny day. 19 person charter plane seems very sketchy to me. We didn't even go through any security checks nor x-rays at YVR Airport. I asked the pilot if he got some parachutes for us when boarding. People laughed at me. It was a shaky, bumpy flight, and I wanted to pee as soon as the airplane took off. There were no restaurants on the plane, so I burst out when we finally landed at Maset Airport. Our prof and the whole class spent our first week in a longhouse near Maset, the biggest town in the northern part of the island. Uh, we were supposed to have class lectures there and it was somehow happening. I did learn some histories and this land from the lectures and we cooked lots of meals together during this time. What I was most interested in though was to explore the environment and to meet people. The town of Maset was fascinating as they, they kept their traditional way of life for thousands of years. Their wood carving and the traditional celebration, art making are all part of Haida's daily life. One day, friends and I decided to take a hike to Rose Speed. According to the Haida legend, the Rose Spit is the place where first Haida walked out of a giant shell from the ocean. We hiked in total of 45 kilometers during this trip, crossing swamps, rainforests, mosses, and walked along the endless beach. We finally arrived in the middle of the ocean. Let me tell you this. The place was truly magical. It's unlike any place I have ever been. There were waves closing in on us, the strong wind blowing us. It was the middle of the ocean in the corner of Northwest Pacific. A person can literally see Alaska standing where we were. It, it's, it's not hard to imagine that the first Haida walked out of the giant shell from here.
We were so exhausted after our hike, but we must go to our next location to catch our professor, who at this time was probably 100 kilometers away. Please allow me to explain our transportation situation. Hadaguay is a group of、uh, remote islands, several hundreds of kilometers in length, with no public transit. At the beginning of this course, our prof explained to us that we should be able to hitchhike on the island with no problems, since Hada people are super nice. And hitchhiking is a popular way to travel on the island. When most of us committed to the idea of waiting around and hitchhiking, the prof conveniently rented a jeep for himself and drove away. Anyways, I pretty much enjoyed the experience of hitchhiking. One day, after five hours of waiting around on the roadside. Two Haida fishermen picked us up while they were drinking and offered us some beers. And you can say no to that. Another night, we got dropped off on a random beach and couldn't go back to meet with our group, so we camped there and enjoyed it. We of course skipped the lectures the very next day. Because of the randomness of this travel method, I woke up one night and realized the sea water was almost at my tent. This is the third morning on Haida Gwaii. We couldn't find our way back to Masset yesterday. It got dark and cold. And we had to start a fire on beach, but it was the highest tide for an entire month. Last line was the water line from last night, and we only camped maybe one or two meters above the water. That's Brendan. That's Iris. And that's me. I woke up and I learned. Day, and what in front of me was a bunch of floating trees in the middle of the ocean. Sometimes we do get bored and cold waiting around on the roadside, so I danced like some lun. In conclusion, hitchhiking is recommended to people who has a lot of time and don't have a lot of money. This experience could be fun. It, it might take you to unexpected places. However, unless you are a hot chick, seriously, unless you are a hot chick, the long wait time isn't worth it. We spent our second week at Skidget and、uh, Queen Charlotte. 
Two towns are close to each other in the center of Haidagwai. Skidiget is a historical Haida village that looks super cool historically and the town's architecture model. The model I saw in the museum. There must be lots of people to build things back then. It was at Skidiget where we met Patrick, the Haida YouTuber, who told us his story dealing with the white people. He kindly invited us to his place, showed us his films, and shared some of his experiences and popcorns with us. You see, not long ago, the Canadian government was still forcefully taking indigenous kids to the Indian residential school, a place set to eliminate indigenous language and culture and replace it with English language and Christian beliefs. Unbelievable. Patrick hated it and escaped it from there. He has been working on films that can bring Haida communities together ever since. I deeply wondered, can a residential school be the reason why a large amount of Haida disappeared? When I was watching Black Panther at Patrick's home, I finally understood why Wakanda chose to hide in their jungle for thousands of years from the messy outside world. I deeply wondered. Queen Charlotte is a, is a large town on the island. We are still supposed to have classes, but at this point, people are feeling more relaxed and more blended into the island time. One day, I was the only one who showed up for a lecture, and it was dismissed pretty quickly. What made me so excited was the opportunity to explore this mysterious island. I hiked around searching for bears, getting lost in the primitive forest. The highlight of the second week was definitely this kayaking trip when we found an abandoned house and explored it. The house was kind of spooky, but not that bad for me. It was located on a northern island in the middle of the ocean and I instantly landed my kayak and went towards it upon discovery. The note card on the front door says the owner moved out and visitors can feel free to explore the property but don't take anything. That's exactly what we did. The place was left rotting. At one point, I thought the floor was going to break when I, and I was going to fall to the basement. Welcome to my house. Super sketchy. All I want to say is that if there were ghosts, they probably would love to hang out here. There, there were lots of cool things being left behind. Imagine this. How cool is it to live in the middle of the ocean with wild animals? That's exactly what his house was about. It's soon the last week of our trip. We took a ferry ride to Moresby Island. Lots of my food has depleted. Crows ate them. True story. I left six bags of freeze-dried meals on my professor's jeep. One day, crows opened the jeeps with their beaks and ate them all. Ate all my six packs of freeze-dried meals. That's six meals times 2.5 servings, which is... Regardless of this incident, I found a bush in front of the Sandspeed Airport and next to the inn where we will have lectures. I camped there for my last days on the island. It's my private bush. It might not be the most comfortable experience, but it certainly was free. My friends even danced in my front yard.
Fucking bro! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it again. We explored many abandoned scenes in the final days. Many hideout villages, no one lives there anymore. It was at these explorations I finally painted the full picture of the disappearance of the Haida people. When Europeans first discovered the island, they brought diseases, smallpox specifically. The disease permanently damaged Haidagua's population. It was estimated that the island had 30,000 people before the European contact. When a disease was spreading on the island, most villages on the island were abandoned. Haidas left their homes and everything they had. Most of them flee to Maset and Skidigat, the two largest Haida towns still standing today. What's more, the disease could have been introduced intentionally. The colonizer could have spread it purposefully to gain control of this once defiant race. Regardless of the truth, a once powerful civilization was destroyed and their unique culture was doomed to be forgotten. Since there were no written languages in the Haida culture, most of their story disappeared along with their people. They have been passing their knowledges orally for generations. The smallpox and the residential school hit them badly. Despite the sad story, I had a great time on the island. I met great people, gained great friendships, and had campfires everywhere. It was a great summer. I flew back to the Vancouver civilization on June 2nd, 2018. Under the glass towers, shining headboards, and concrete jungles, I ponder. A modern life that made us so busy in pursuing the idea of success. What will we left behind? Everything we ever owned will eventually become dust and return to the earth. We are tiny in front of the time. Perhaps it's time to rethink what is so important that we need to be so busy pursuing. Thank you for watching my videos. I have determined that I will make at least two new videos per week from now on. Please consider subscribe to my channel.